It has been my pleasure to cover the Quad City area's most extraordinary teams and amazing athletes for nearly 15 years. Like the girls rowing team that recently made history with their victory in England. Or the young local gymnast who's chasing her dreams on a national level. Because when you boil it all down, local sports, it's not about the games, but about the people who play them. I'm Jay Kidwell, and I'm local for you. Listen up, Quad Cities. What if you could gather all the best man stuff into one place? Cars, motorcycles, guns, toys, ribs, and yes, tasers. November 9th to the 11th, the QCCA Expo Center will once again be transformed into the world's largest man cave. Drive a NASCAR simulator from Rolex Racing Systems. See a 60s pinup contest or win your very own man cave. The third annual Wheatler's Harley Davidson Man Show, powered by WHBF. Go online to find out more. Decision day in Iowa and Illinois for governor. Illinois' Bruce Rauner and J.B. Pritzker in the battle of the billionaires. This election is over. We have a failed governor today who's a Republican and who's created crisis after crisis. A toss-up in Iowa. Kim Reynolds fights to keep her job. Do you want to stop and go backwards? Do you want to see your taxes go up? Democrat Fred Hubble mounts a big challenge. I know how to get results. I know how to lead. Who wins? Leadership on the line. Your local election headquarters coverage of the 2018 midterm starts now. Now, from your local election headquarters, this is a special Election Day edition of Local 4 News. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Needleman. And I'm Tiffany Lundberg. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News at 10. Illinois will have a new governor, J.B. Pritzker. Bruce Browner conceded just before 8 o'clock tonight. That race got called quickly. Your local election headquarters begins with Illinois. Illinois has a new person moving into the governor's mansion. As we mentioned, J.B. Pritzker with the big lead. We have people all over Iowa and Illinois tonight. Let's send it to Mark Maxwell, who joins us live in Chicago at J.B. Pritzker's headquarters. The blue wave was real. In fact, it was a tsunami. J.B. Pritzker, the first statewide candidate, declared the winner tonight. After him, the entire statewide race, all of the Democrats declaring a clean sweep, making gains in Congress as well. Much of that was supported by Governor Rauner's unpopularity and J.B. Pritzker's big bucks. He outspent Governor Rauner by $100 million. That's unprecedented, not just in Illinois, but anywhere in the entire country. A personal self-funding record. It paid off as Illinois turns the calendar on its third century. It will have a new governor, governor-elect J.B. Pritzker, moments ago, talking about the future of the business climate and the economy he sees for the future of Illinois. Voting is an act of optimism that the levers of our democracy still work. You embody that optimism. You light the beacon fire on the hill of history that signals from one generation to another that these are the things that we stand and fight for. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your faith in Juliana and me. All right, and that was Emily Weldron reporting. Obviously, she, she couldn't hear us. We'll try to go back to her a bit later. Absolutely. Now, it looks like Democrats won't give up the post they've held since 2003. That is the Illinois Attorney General's office. Yeah, it has been a busy night at Kwame Rowell's headquarters in Chicago. That is where we find local force Sean Logging. Sean? All right, apparently we don't have Sean either. Things are still fluid, so a crazy night here on election it night. It is election night. That's the way it happens sometimes, absolutely. Uh, we're going to check on uh, the well, another race that went into tonight as a toss-up. That is from the pollsters, and it could be a long night as we talk about uh, the Illinois-Iowa governor's race here between Kim Reynolds and Fred Hubble. A lot of money went to this race. 
Hey, yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, uh, as we've been mentioning, we've been on uh, Fox 18 News at 9. Uh, we've been talking about it all night. Now we're on Local 4 News at 10. Uh, the polls in Iowa closed at 9 o'clock, so those numbers have been slow to come in. So let's take a look at those numbers right now. Here is for Illinois U.S. House Di District 17. So we're moving away from Iowa at this point. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's take a look at that. 92% of precincts reporting. Uh, Sherry Bustos obviously claiming a victory. 61% of the vote over Bill Faywell. We're, we're going to get back to that Illinois Attorney General's race because right. we've been following all night with Fahmy Raul with a big victory over Erica Harrell, the Republican. A lot of money in this race. He outspent her two to one. Local four, Sean Logging, joined us live from Chicago and uh, Kwame Raul's headquarters. Sean? It is a party here tonight at the watch party for Kwame Raul as he pulls off a victory for the Illinois Attorney General's office. Now this will keep it in Democratic control, replacing Lisa Madigan, who served four terms but decided not to run for a fifth. Now Kwame Raul took to the stand about an hour ago to give his speech, his victory speech. The main theme of that was thanking his family and the role that his family has played in this campaign. He said that his children were one of the key reasons in order to help make this state safer for them and address the issues of violence, especially gun violence, uh, that affects their everyday life. He also talked about his father, who was a longtime physician in the Chicago area, helping the underserved population. He says that affordable health care was one of the key reasons he got into this race to make sure that, that that's it available to Illinois residents. Of course, he also talked about Donald Trump and how he will serve as a last line of defense against the president's policies when he is entered into office. Here's a little what he had to say about that. We reject the hate that has come from Donald Trump, the divisiveness that has come from his mouth, that has created an uh, environment where people are sending packages and, and, and going into houses of worship. Uh, but, but, but more than those words, and those words are damaging, is the policies that accompany them. It took about 90 minutes for a concession speech from Erica Harrell to uh, concede the race here this evening. And then, of course, um, this will serve as a very momentous evening. As you can see, the party is still going on here at the camp for Kwame Raul. Live in Chicago, Sean Logging, Local 4 News. Uh. All right, Sean, thank you so much. I think we are going to take a look at the race for Iowa governor at this point. That's what we are being told. We've been waiting can... for the results and returns from that race all night. Of course, the polls close at 9 o'clock. It's only a little after 10 o'clock now. Of course, that is uh, Kim Reynolds, the uh, incumbent Republican, looking actually for her first elected term in office, going against Fred Hubble, the Democrat there. i uh, told we're getting those numbers uh, up here, guys. Uh, She's the first female uh, governor go of Iowa. Iowa and we'll and see history, if she can absolutely. keep that seat. Uh, looks like we are going to go to local four's Grace Runkle. She is actually at Kim Reynolds' watch party tonight. Grace, what can you tell us? Jim Tiffany, up until now, things have been pretty calm here at the Iowa Republican Watch Party. But as you can hear behind me here, the crowd is getting much more vocal. Let me show you. Everyone has been gathered around this screen now for about an hour since the polls have closed, and the crowd just keeps growing. Now, the latest numbers show Hubble with 52% of the votes and Reynolds with 45%, and that's with about 50% of the precincts reporting. Now, when those results came up on the screen, everyone let out a little bit of a nervous gas but whenever they see red come up they cheer and whenever they see blue they boo but we're going to continue to bring you the latest in results here at the Iowa Republican watch party but for now live in Des Moines Grace Runkle local foreign news all right, Grace, thank you. Now to the race for Illinois Secretary of State. Incumbent Jesse White has been Secretary of State since 1999, and it looks like he will continue. White has beat Republican Jason Helland with 68% of the vote, 86% of the precincts reporting at this time. A high-profile, highly contested race we've been following all night is for the Illinois State Senate. That is the 36th district seat representing largely Rock Island County, but over in other counties as well. Republican incumbent Neil Anderson against Democrat Greg Johnson. This race is very, very close with 92 percent of the precincts reporting. Neil Anderson with 51 percent and Johnson's 49 percent. Only 700 or so votes separate the two right now. We'll be watching this race closely tonight. Wow, yes, that is close. Chief Meteorologist Annie McCray joins us now. Uh, 
Nice to see you, Andy. We didn't yeah. see you at the top of the show. We're not used to that. <laughs> I know. Maybe the one day out of the year we don't start maybe with the It was the wind that kept you off the newscast <laughs> at the top, yeah, right? It was windy out there today, that is for sure. I think it'll be a little breezy again tomorrow, too. I'll talk a lot more about that here in just a couple of minutes. First, though, a quick look at the almanac numbers for today. If you thought it felt a little colder than normal, well, you were exactly right about that. But there's even colder weather in the forecast. Those details are coming up in just a couple of minutes. First, though, a quick look at some closing numbers for the almanac today here in the Quad Cities. I'm back with the forecast next on Local 4 News at 10. WHBF is local for you with Jim Needleman. Tiffany Lumberg, Chief Meteorologist Andy McRae, and Sports Director Jay Kidwell. This is Local 4 News at 10 in high definition. Portions of Local 4 News are brought to you by Honda. Switch to U.S. Cellular and get $600 off the latest smartphones. No trade-in required. Go with another carrier? These one. Box one. And get knocked out by a bad deal. What? You got this, kid. Don't get knocked out. Switch to U.S. Cellular and get $600 off the latest smartphones. No trade-in required. Plus national coverage in the middle of anywhere. As a waitress, you're running all over the place. Well, if you have a four- or six-hour shift and you're in pain the whole time, that seems like an eternity. I was just aching. My feet were throbbing. I was just genuinely hurting. I kind of lost hope. And then I saw the Good Feet store, and I decided to stop in. When I went in there, that's when everything changed. My name is Kristen, and that's my Good Feet story. See for yourself with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. When you see news happen, record it on your phone and send it to the Local 4 News team using the Our Quad Cities app. Tomorrow at Checkers, the 69-cent All-American Cheeseburger. Tomorrow only at Checkers, the 69-cent All-American Cheeseburger. Tomorrow only at any one of the Quad Cities Checkers locations. Computer Evolution is the only locally owned Apple authorized sales center in the Quad Cities. With A-plus certified technicians to help you with all of your computer needs, located off of 53rd and Elmore. I'm asking you to play for something bigger. When you do, you'd be unstoppable. You Find the Quad City CW on 26.1, 4.2, and on these pay services. Spend your evening with country music's biggest stars on the red carpet at the 52nd CMA Awards. It's fashion and fun. Yeah. Live from Nashville, Tennessee. The CMA Awards red carpet Wednesday, November 14th. Get WHBF on the go. Go to cbs.com slash all access now to try it free. And now, Chief Meteorologist Andy McRae with your local pinpoint forecast. Cold weather moving in today. It gets even colder over the next few days. And then, even though we're only in the first half of November, we have the chance for some snow coming up by Thursday afternoon and Thursday night and Friday. So that's looking ahead a couple of days. But trust me, we'll be watching it very closely here as we get a little bit closer to the end of the week. High temperature today, again, below normal. It's been that way for the majority of the days so far here in November. And it's cold outside tonight, too. 37 in the Quad Cities, 33 in Galena, 36 in Geneseo. Here's our Blaine's Farm and Fleet Sky Cam on a breezy night, but it's not as windy as it was earlier, and that tends to happen. Normally overnight, winds aren't quite so strong, so they'll be down a little bit tonight, then they pick back up just a little bit tomorrow. We'll get to that forecast here in a minute. We are finally clearing things out a little bit. It's getting colder, and we do have that chance for some Thursday and Friday snow later in the week. Right now, 37, but it feels like it's 29 degrees in the Quad Cities. Weather on the go, always available with the Our Quad Cities app. Also on our website, that's ourquadcities.com. And what's pretty cool about this hour-by-hour -hour breakdown that you can see here, anytime we update the forecast from here in the Weather Center at your local pinpoint forecast, it immediately updates on your phone. So you can always stay in touch with the changing weather here in the Quad Cities. And we do have some changes on the way this week. One of those changes, sunshine. We haven't had a whole lot of that lately, but there is some coming up. Up tomorrow. Now back to the winds. Today they were 20 25 miles per hour out of the west. Tomorrow through the middle part of the day, about 15 miles per hour. So breezy, yes. As windy as today, no, that will not be the case tomorrow. 
We are seeing a little bit of that clearing, especially south of Interstate 80. Here's our future cast now. I switched this over to a different computer model. It goes out a little bit further, and you'll see the snow chances coming up. We don't have to worry about it Wednesday or early Thursday. Then we have this first system coming in Thursday. That'll give us the chance for rain and snow. And here comes another system Friday tracking into the area. So a couple snow chances lining up for later in the week. Tonight, no snow, but it will be chilly, 31 for the low, and then tomorrow a high temperature that makes it only up into the 40s. We will have some sunshine, but be ready for a cold day tomorrow. Seven-day forecast, chance for rain and snow Thursday, then again Friday in the cold weather. That is here to stay for a while. But we'll keep you updated on those snow chances later in the week, all week long. Now, we'll send it back over to your local election headquarters. Here's Jim and Tiffany with more election info. Andy, thank you, of course. Yes, more election results now. Uh, a big race uh, is in the race for Rock Island County Sheriff. I believe we're going that with right now, right? Incumbent Democrat Jerry Bustos against Republican Kiko Martinez. We're pulling that one up. Uh, it doesn't look like All right, well, I guess we're doing something else. A uh, group of Republican voters in Rockon County watching the races from Moline. All right, more than a dozen are in and out of the River House on River Drive. The watch party is organized by the Rock Island County Republican Party. The group's chairperson says although the party took a hit in local races tonight, their work is not over. We are building our party. Politics is a pendulum. Sometimes things do sway the other way. Um, we look at see why. Uh, what what message did people not resonate with? What did we not deliver, or what 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 did they not think that we could deliver on? We're, believe me, we're going to hit the ground running December first. Republican candidate for sheriff Kiko Martinez lost to incumbent Jerry Bustos tonight. Uh, we're still watching the race closely between Neil Anderson and retired union leader Democrat Greg Johnson. Too close to call in that race tonight. We spoke with local parties in Scott County as well. A long history of being blue there. Uh, the Scott County Democratic Party chair told us it would mean a lot for the entire state to turn blue, but the Republican Party is banking on the bigger turnout. We think she has done such a good job that people really look at the record we have here in Iowa and all the good things that are going on in Iowa that we should indeed re-elect someone who has made us uh, one of the strongest states in the nation. Fred Hubble has already outlined that to turn the privatization of Medicare, Medicaid around um, and his platforms of taking people care of people first as opposed to the big corporations. I think there'll be a very different tone in Iowa if he's elected. And as we told you earlier, Illinois governor has conceded his re-election bid to his Democrat challenger, that is J.B. Pritzker. That happened shortly after the polls closed, just after 8 o'clock. Bruce Rauner elected four years ago, 2014. During his concession speech tonight, he thanked the people of Illinois for the opportunity to serve. Voting is an act of optimism that the levers of our democracy still work. You embody that optimism. You light the beacon fire on the hill of history that signals from one generation to another that these are the things that we stand and fight for. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your faith in Juliana and me. This is a time to express our deepest appreciation, to say thank you. It's been a privilege, it's been a humbling honor to serve you, to serve all of the people of our great state. I would like to say thank you to all the people of Illinois for the opportunity to serve you. Illinois Governor elect J.B. Pritzker spent more than $171 million on his campaign. This will be the first elected office he will hold. Holy cow, that is a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. A high profile, highly contested race for the Illinois State Senate. That is the 36th district seat we've been telling you about earlier tonight. Rock Island County, 100% <coughs> of the precincts now reporting, it, it seems. Republican Neil Anderson holding on to victory here. 51% to 49% to Democratic challenger Greg Johnson. And now I think we are going to head over to the Mercer County Sheriff's race. That is happening in Illinois. Incumbent Democrat Dave Staley is taking on Republican Dustin Terrell with 100% of the precincts reporting. It looks like Dustin Terrell will take that office. Whiteside County Sheriff's Race, also in Illinois, Democrat John Booker going on to take that office, defeating Republican Christopher Schmidt. This is an open seat replacing uh, Mr. Sheriff Wilhelmy there. So open seat there, John Booker the next.
Sheriff of Whiteside County. Well, let's head to the Muscatine County Attorney's Race. Do we have the Muscatine County Attorney's Race? That is incumbent Republican Alan Ostergren. He is taking on Democrat William Tharp with 52% of the precincts reporting. Obviously, you can't call that. Both have 50% of the vote at this time. Now to some races for Congress, Illinois 17th Congressional District pits Democrat Sherry Bustos against Republican Bill Faywell. Sherry Bustos looks like she will get her fourth term in Congress with 62% of the vote tonight over Bill Faywell. All right, and I think we're going to take a quick break. Well, let's go to the Illinois Attorney General's race while we're here. Kwame Raoul, we have said, <laughs> has we gone on to victory tonight. Uh, his first election taking the seat left vacant by Lisa Maddock and Kwame Raoul with a big, big victory over Republican Erica Harold tonight. Now we are going to take a quick break. Absolutely. More election coverage when we come back. <laughs> Portions of Local 4 News are being brought to you by Computer Evolution. At Hardee's, we wake up at 4 a.m. to make our buttermilk biscuits from scratch. But I don't believe in clocks. My body wakes me up when I tell it to. Body. Oh, yeah. Make two breakfast sandwiches, only $4. Hardy's because it tastes better. At Cracker Barrel, we're cooking up warm feelings of home this season with our new country fried turkey. It's a brand new take on a festive favorite, hand breaded and fried till crispy and topped with holiday herb gravy. It's only a Cracker Barrel, so come on home for the holidays. Reynolds Kitchens has eliminated plastic wrap frustration for good. To celebrate, award winner Jeff Russo composed the world's shortest victory song. This is the good stuff. At Hardee's, we wake up at 4 a.m. to make our buttermilk biscuits from scratch. But I don't believe in clocks. My body wakes me up when I tell it to. Body? Oh, yeah. Make two breakfast sandwiches, only $4. Hardee's, because it tastes better. Get local 4 news updates throughout the day on B100, the Quad City's number one hit music station. The best car. At the best price. At Reynolds Ford. Take 11000 off a 2018 F-150 Super Crew. Get a 2015 Focus for only $10,991. Car buying made easy. Home of the makers. Be comfortable and safe in your home. Call Kale and get your $199 heating and air conditioning home checkup twice a year. Kale voted number one in the Quad Cities. Think comfort, think Kale. Living Local is going to be all about positive spotlights of our community, and I feel like I can bring that positivity as well as that energy. I also think I'm an effective communicator. I just like to be real with people and make them feel comfortable and confident to share more about who they are. The Quad Cities is where I love to be. The best car. At the best price. At Reynolds Ford. Take 11000 off a 2018 F-150 Super Crew. Get a 2015 Focus for only $10,991. Car buying made easy. Home of the makers. Welcome back. There's a lot to unpack in terms of the ramifications this election has on Springfield, in Des Moines, and in Washington, D.C. We'll talk about that now with two political scientists, Professor Bill Parsons of St. Ambrose University and Professor David Daniel of Augustana College. Thanks you, thank you both for being here. Um, let's start with Illinois first. A big win for J.B. Prisker to be the next governor of Illinois. He's also going to enjoy majorities in both chambers. Um, does it need a super majorities, but I guess it doesn't hurt. Does, what does this do in terms of the pressure on Democrats now? Yeah, that's a good point. I think uh, Democrats certainly uh, have uh, a lot of responsibility when they're uh, n when they have uh, both the governor and state legislature, uh, and I certainly uh, they hope that relationships between the legislature and the governor are better than they were when Governor Quinn was in office, and uh, you know things could have been uh, better. There's a pressure to govern and get things done. We've that's seen right. the crises over the last four years. There's no more excuses at this point. I guess you could say that, right? I don't. I think there's big challenges too. I think we should be fair to say that absolutely. You know, there there's some big challenges in front of the state, uh, which have been created over many years. But you're right; it's the Democrats' turn to uh, try to address those. Uh, the big question of the night is really coming down to Iowa. Will it be Fred Hubble? Will it be Kim Reynolds actually getting her first true elected term after inheriting the job from Terry Branstad? Uh, Professor Parsons. Um, we're seeing Hubble with the early lead uh, right now, but of course only about a quarter of the precincts reporting. He might have been a benefactor or benef getting the benefit of the early votes. Yeah, we've seen uh, nationwide, and it's been typical for Democrats uh, to vote early. I don't know what that early vote looks like, but it seems like that that could be part of the lead. But he does have a pretty good lead right now compared to some of the other governor's races that um, showed Democrats leading early. Um, but not quite as uh, much of a margin as he has. But 
Uh, I fully suspect that it's going to really tighten up as the the more red counties uh, come in. And we're seeing similar things in uh, District 1 and District 3. Both uh, Finkenauer and uh, Cindy Axney have pretty good leads at this point. I think They're making strong showings to possibly turn those red districts blue. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the numbers right. About 50% of the vote is in, in, in uh, District 3, and she has a pretty good lead there. So I, again, expect it to tighten, but those two are looking pretty good. And it's early in Those district. are David Young seeds and Rod Blum seeds? Yeah, and it's it, right now it's like 15 18% of the vote in in District 4, and uh, Congressman King is like 1% behind, but again, I, I think, you know, That'll it's way flip too it early. Way. It's really too early to tell, but it is really interesting, the beginning of this. It's really exciting. We, there was the talk the Democrats were trying to push the so-called blue wave. Don't know if that's really happening right now. From a federal level, we've seen that the Republicans, Republicans are going to take control of the Senate, remain in control of the Senate, yeah. uh, but uh, CBS News has projected and CNN has projected that the Democrats will take control of the House of Representatives. Well, I'd like to hear both of your takes on what it means to have a potentially divided government now on Capitol Hill. What could we see? I'll start with you, Professor Parsons. Yeah, I think that the, at least initially they're going to be trying to look at a way that maybe they could try to work on some legislation together. You try to see that very early on after an election. We we'll see how long it holds because with the, the you know the polarized environment that we have and now calling it tribalism. There's not a whole lot of evidence that they will be able to break through that, but I think they're at least going to maybe give it some lip service to begin and see if they can get some things done. A lot of pressure to get out of stalemate, I'm sure. Well, there's pressure, but, uh, you know, with the div division, it's also uh, hard to pin down responsibility. And, uh, you know, when the Republicans had control, uh, Mitch McConnell said, well, there'll be no government shutdowns. But now uh, is that uh, ruled now by the board because he'll blame the House of Representatives and for it. vice versa and vice versa of course so yeah I'm not sure uh, you know it is uh, we, we hope uh, Con the, contentious the, the, times and we're just yeah. beginning obviously well she watched on Capitol Hill we're used to seeing a lot of that uh, Professor Dave Daniel Professor Bill Parsons thanks so much for being here tonight of course your insights always appreciated we'll be watching what happens we'll be right back with more election coverage you're watching local 4 news at 10 goodbye to slow internet and get our best offer. Switch to extreme super fast internet and smarter TV before November 21st and get a $200 extreme Visa prepaid card. Cha-ching! Plus Showtime and free TiVo DVR. Get extreme internet, TV and phone for as low as $29.99 each a month for one year when bundled. Plus a $200 extreme Visa prepaid card. Call 844-EXTREME2. Your life is on the go. Well, I've got my new secret weapon. If you have hearing loss, you can still enjoy the convenience of your cell phone with a mini cell phone amplifier, free to all qualified Illinois residents from iTac. How many do you plan on losing? <laughs> this amplifier works with any Bluetooth cell phone or smartphone. Secure, easy, free. Stay connected on the go. Learn more about this free program at itacty.org. Keep Illinois connected. Other amplified and captioned phones available. The Local 4 News Washington Bureau brings the important stories of the day home to you like no one else can. The Local 4 News Washington Bureau. Local for you. When we send an electrician to your home, it's not just a reflection on our company, it's also a reflection on our family. I'm Tim Kohler with Kohler Electric. My commitment to you is simple. Kohler electricians are friendly and they'll show up on time. Even more, you'll know upfront what the job will cost so there will be absolutely no surprises later. For friendly on-time electricians and no surprise billing, give Kohler Electric a call today. Kohler Electric, friendly, on time, and no surprise billing. What if you could have access to a nationally recognized retirement expert who could give you ideas on how to leave the IRS out of your retirement plan? Nationally known retirement expert Jeff Levine will headline a free financial planning event on Wednesday, November 14th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the Rogalski Center on the campus of St. Ambrose University in Davenport. Learn tips on how to avoid common retiree pitfalls and cut your tax bill. 
It's an opportunity you don't want to miss. Space is limited, so reserve your spot with Nelson Corp today. Welcome back. We expect it to be a long night as we watch those results for the Iowa's governor's race. Local force Grace Runkle joins us live from Governor Kim Reynolds headquarters in Des Moines. Grace, what can you tell us? Jim Tiffany, we've been saying it all night and it's turning out to be true. This is a very close race. Here's a look at the latest numbers. It's showing Hubble has 49.3% of the votes and we're seeing that Reynolds has 48.6. So that's less than one percentage of votes that separates the two candidates. And right now, everyone in the room here, they're just very focused. We're seeing people looking back at the monitors and a lot of people keep refreshing their phone to see if there's any update. Right now, it looks like about 76% of the pre things are reporting their numbers so like we said this is going to be a very tight race and local four news will be here all night reporting those results as they come in so make sure you keep checking back on ourquadcities.com we're going to have the numbers there all night and keep watching local four news for the latest updates but for right now live in des moines grace runkle local four news all right grace thank you and we will have more election coverage after a quick break you're watching local four news at 10. Portions of Local 4 News are brought to you by Culver's. We can't cook, we can't shower, got a backed up sink, we've been waiting for eight hours. Oh, nine! The kids are starting to stink. Should have called B&B, because seriously, who likes waiting? B&B Drain Tech offers superior service 24-7, including septic and grease trap pumping, sewer line camera inspection, high-pressure aqua jetting, and more. For your commercial, residential, or industrial needs, call B&B Drain Tech, working to be number one in the number two business. Problems. The ones most people don't have the stomach for. The ones nobody talks about at parties. We go looking for them, and we find every dollar we can to address them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in the Quad Cities. Because change doesn't happen alone. We have one life. To live better, we must live united. Get the latest news, your local pinpoint forecast, and the latest highlights and stories from Quad City area sports teams, all 24 hours a day, seven days a week on our quadcities.com. I dropped it on the floor, and he stepped on it. No matter how you broke your smartphone, there's only one smart way to fix it. Batteries plus bulbs. Schedule your repair at batteriesplus.com. What is dirt rich? It's when you're getting everything you can out of your soil. And if you want to be dirt rich, you'll want to use new Poncho Votivo 2.0 seed treatment. With a new biologic enhancing the microbial activity in the soil, it helps your plants get more nutrients from the ground while still getting the same great protection against nematodes and insects. So you get an average 3.8 bushel per acre yield increase. And that's smart. Grow smart with BASF. Use Poncho Votivo 2.0 and be dirt rich. Welcome to Gonzo's. Free margarita with a marinated pork delight dinner for only $9.95. Only at Gonzo's. Find news that's local for you on Facebook. Welcome back to your local election headquarters. We'll get over a couple of more races for you tonight. Of course, the big race of the night in Illinois is for Governor Democrat J.B. Pritzker will replace Republican Governor Bruce Rauner. You can see the vote there. 89% of the precincts reporting. J.B. Pritzker with 54% of Rauner's 39%, a margin of uh, about half a million votes so far, almost 600,000. And now let's talk about Illinois Secretary of State. Incumbent Jesse White has been Secretary of State since 1999, and that will continue. He has beat Jason Helland with 89% of the precincts reporting. Jesse White claims a victory. High-profile, hotly contested race. This is for Illinois State Senate, District 36, representing Rock Island County mostly. This has been a very close one. This is very local. Incumbent Neil Anderson, the Republican, will maintain his seat there with 51% and Democrat Greg Johnson's 49%. And now to some races for Congress, Illinois' 17th Congressional District, with 99% of the precincts reporting, Sherry Bustos will remain in her seat. On to a fourth term there. Another race, Illinois, Illinois Attorney General 
Kwame Raul with a big win tonight over Republican Erica Harold, replacing the outgoing retiring Lisa Magic in their big win for the Democrats. And Chief Meteorologist Andy McRae joins us again. We haven't seen much of you tonight, Andy, but we're glad to have you. You get our vote. Some good That's news okay. for us. That's all right. Uh, well, wait, you want good news? Maybe I better just walk away then. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of it in the forecast. Uh, it's going to get a lot colder here over the next few days. And we're also going to have a chance for a little bit of rain and snow coming up later, a little bit down the road. All right, let's start off with the 10-day forecast. 43 tomorrow. The normal high right now is in the middle 50s, so that's not even all that close to average. And we do have the chance for some rain and snow coming up. That'll be the case Thursday, then again Friday. And look at the highs Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We're only in the 30s, so that's almost 20 degrees below normal. This will be some of the coldest daytime weather that we've ever had for this early in the month of November. And if we end up with a little half an inch or an inch of snow on the ground, then that overnight low Friday night into Saturday, instead of dipping down to 19, could go all the way down to around 15. After that, some bounce back in the temperature. Not much, though. You can see it'll be later next week by the time we make it into the lower and middle 40s again. So a lot of below average weather on the way. We do have that chance for rain and snow. One of them Thursday, another one Friday. Those are two separate systems offering up two chances for rain and snow. All right, when you head out the door tomorrow morning, here's what we're looking at. Temperatures will be on the chilly side. A few clouds early, but a lot of those are wiped away by afternoon, and we will have some sunshine. But you can tell from that little step ladder of temperatures there, some <laughs> cold weather coming up as you head out the door tomorrow morning. I, I, it, it was cold this morning. Yeah, I said you had my vote, but I might reconsider after seeing those numbers. Uh-oh. Too late. That ballot <laughs> has been cast. Oh, Golly, <laughs> foiled again. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great night. The uh, Late Show with Stephen Colbert is next. Have a good night. Follow Local 4 News 24 hours a day on OurQuadCities.com. Hairstyles provided by Infinity Salon and Spa.